What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. It's my birthday. That's right. I am turning 23. I really appreciate all of you who reached out on social media to wish me happy birthday. That is amazing. It makes me feel really appreciated. I love it. Thank you very, very much. Today, we are going to talk about callbacks in RxJS. They are a lot simpler. If you're from a node perspective, everything's callbacks and you're either wrapping it with promises. Today, we're going to wrap it with RxJS instead. It goes back to the whole asynchronous thing. RxJS can do that. If you're on the front end, you might have a lot of callbacks from asynchronous operations or libraries that follow that kind of pattern. You can use this in either scenario. We're going to build three today. I've commented out all the code from yesterday. And what we're going to do is instead of wrapping the AWS function inside of a promise, our third exercise is going to wrap this guy in an Rx from callback. So we'll show you how you don't have to wrap things and promises like that if you don't want to. If you have a callback, you can use the native callback functionality that's built into RxJS. Let's do some quick exercises just to warm ourselves up here. We'll use the file system module that's built into Node here. FS stands for file system. It's used to read and write text files. Create a callback called read file and notice we're not doing a function here we're just going to get a reference or a wrapped function so we'll say from callback fs read file and what we're going to do is read this cal text file which has the word sub in it we'll call read file and we'll pass in the two parameters that read file has if you don't remember what they are I'll do a hover real quick so you can see. The first parameter is a file name of what file name you'd like to read. And the second is the encoding. We're going to hard code it to UTF-8. Third parameter is the callback to let you know if it worked or not. File name of cal.txt with a UTF-8 encoding. And the third parameter is the callback, which RxJS will handle for us. We'll subscribe. First parameter is the next function. So we'll say, hopefully, logging out text from reading from that text file. Second parameter is the error if anything went wrong. Very similar to how a promise works. The first function is legit. The second is boom. There's a third in RxJS for completed. We don't care. Let's rerun this guy. You notice get an array back. First parameter is null, which means nothing blew up. Undefined or null just implies that no error occurred. And the second parameter is sub. That's our text. Fantastic. Now you'll notice we did get an array, but if you want to go back to the old syntax and just say from node callback, RxJS has that option about callbacks that it's aware of. Instead of us having to parse an array out, we can just rerun this guy and it gets our text directly from it, knows the first error, kind of does the map internally for you. Let's do something a little more complex to leverage why we're using RxJS. We're not just reading text files, we're actually filtering things before we actually read the data out. Let's take data JSON here. It's a, a JSON file and it's basically me. Wait a minute, 38, hold on. It's my birthday, I'm 23. And what we're going to do is parse this out. We're going to use the same same thing. We're gonna change this to data JSON. JSON. Yeah. When we run this guy, we get JSON string as a second parameter, but we don't want that. We actually want this as a JSON object already parsed. We can just use map, right? Just like a Lodash arrays map where you would say, take a value in and give me something cooler out. So what we get past is not actually the string, but it's an array here, right? So we'll write it as such. We'll say error and JSON string. So we kind of know what we're getting and take our JSON string out of it using Lodash to be safe. It's the last option in, last item in the array here. And then we'll return back the parsed version of that. So we'll say JSON parse. So now when we rerun it, we actually get our parsed JSON back. Voila, we get a nice JavaScript object, fantastic. The last thing we wanna do is use the native AWS SDK without having to do this promise wrapping. It's going to illustrate a problem. Sometimes you'll get code, especially on the front end, where they're still using this. They care about scope. They might be using classes. And this keyword is used very heavily. RxJS has an option to handle that, is show you what happens when you don't do that. Say Rx observable from callback. Say Lambda list functions. List functions. We don't care about the parameters, whatever the defaults are, great. Subscribe, log out whatever functions we got back. My Lambda account, just if you remember the video yesterday. If you don't, we're loading all the functions from my AWS account, all the Lambda functions they have. It gives you back a big old array of JSON objects, which give you information about those functions. When we run this, you'll notice it immediately blows up and it's looking for something called this make request. This make request is part of the, if you look in the stack trace here, part of the AWS SDK. And the reason is it needs this. So this is, pun is kind of intended. This is to imply that it actually needs this keyword. It cares about scope. Normally it invokes it and it doesn't care about this. It's going to do an array dot apply. If it gives it a default scope to our RxJS and this doesn't work, then we can supply one for it and say, look, if you're going to invoke something on the AWS SDK up here, please use 
the AWS SDK is the this keyword instead of RxJS. Now when we run it, we're gonna get the list of functions that we had before, but now it's in an array. What's kind of funny is we can take the same stuff that we wrote yesterday, put it right before the subscribe function and everything will almost work. The only thing that won't work is pluck functions is expecting an object with this on it. We've got an array. So real quick, let's do map yet again. Take our list and get the last item, last item in the list, which is our object. We don't care about the error in the front. We don't care it's an array. We just want to return that object. Get rid of our semicolon, rerun our code. We are missing our predicate. So let's go ahead and bring him back. We'll cut him, I commented him out, put him right above. And finally, third time's the charm. When you run it, you get our functions just like we did yesterday. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you wrap callbacks in Rx Observables. It has a from callback method. It has some form of scope requirements. If that's the case, just go ahead and pass it in as a second parameter and it'll get your scope. And notice, we don't actually have any pure functions here getting this guy. It's just a raw observable. None of these filters were actually done in the return. So you can do those as soon as you get the observable back, then subscribe to it. If you want to filter what's actually coming out of the next.